speaker is Bryce Hawk, a native Lovelander and a Loveland High School football star, who went off to Colorado College and then to teach in Marks, Mississippi, an impoverished community in the rural South. He returned to the Front Range to administer scholarship opportunities for promising science students around the country. In 2009, he decided to tackle the problem of homelessness as the director of Homework 2020, a community authored and owned 10-year plan to end homelessness. Please welcome Bryce Hawk. Well, I think we've all probably had that experience where you're driving down the street and you're approaching a stop sign or a street light and you see a homeless person holding, holding a sign looking for a donation. And you have a decision to make. You can either give money to that individual, but if you give money, how do you know that money is going to be spent well? If you don't give money, do you make eye contact with that individual? Well, regardless, pretty soon that light's going to change and you get back on the road and be thinking about things like uh, the dinner you're going to or picking up the kids or going to a business meeting and pretty quickly the issue of homelessness tends to fit, fade off the radar. Well, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the issue of homelessness today and really not about how do we manage homelessness more effectively or how do we make the state of homelessness a more comfortable place to be, but really about ending homelessness. And there's some pretty fundamental reasons behind thinking this way. The first is, is that we, those who are in homeless situations, those who are literally living on the streets, are essentially living, by and large, in survival mode, meaning almost all of one's time and attention and energy is being directed toward things like, where's my next meal going to come from? Where am I going to sleep tonight? Where am I going to find the clothing to put on my back? And when you're in that, that survival mode, it takes a tremendous toll on somebody. It takes a tremendous toll uh, in terms of uh, your physical well-being, in terms of mentally, uh, in terms of uh, emotionally, spiritually, on a number of different levels. And, it, and that tremendous toll, what we have found is those who live on the street in our country are living on average about 25 to 30 years less than the general population. So we really are talking, by and large, about our community's most vulnerable citizens. But there's other reasons as well. And another, another critical aspect is that homelessness is actually very, very expensive. When you're in that state of survival mode, what we found is that the homeless population is using the emergency room, the, the jail, the ambulance, fire department, police department, mainstream services in a very disproportionate kind of way. Essentially, in many ways, being a revolving door of that mainstream service use. In fact, there was a study made by the United States Interagency Council on Homelessness, which is really the federal government's arm on the issue. They looked at 61 communities across the country and found that the cost to keeping our homeless on the street, essentially perpetuating that random ricochet effect of mainstream disproportionate service use, that it was anywhere between thirty-five dollars and $150,000 per person per year. At the end of that year, that person is still sleeping under a bridge, or under a park bench, or in the jail, or in the hospital, no closer to no longer being homeless than they were before. In addition to that, what we've also found is that the highest concentration of those who are homeless tends to be in, um, in, in the downtown business districts, where it also tends to be where that community has the highest level of commerce. And what we have found then is that that actually has quite a detrimental effect on the local economy. In fact, a lot of the efforts have been made to really end homelessness have not so much gone, come about from the social service community, they have come out from the business community because it does have, again, a detrimental effect on the local economy. The third aspect is that when you're help, able to help elevate folks out of survival mode and give people the vantage point to not start addressing things that are more systemic and long term, like mental health, substance abuse, education, employment, then you're able to help elevate folks out of that survival mode and, and start mo moving people from being tax users toward becoming taxpayers. And so those are all three big economic reasons for ending homelessness, much less just the social one. And then, in addition to that, I think what we have found is what does it take to really make this happen? And what it really is, is instead of the traditional model where we hope someone can get all their mental health issues addressed and their substance abuse issues and, and find a job, and then they can go ahead and move in housing, they do that essentially while they're homeless. And that, what we found, is about logistically impossible. Instead, let's move the pieces around a little bit. And let's provide the housing first. 
and enmesh that in case management and supportive services. And what we, what we found is that it does actually elevate somebody out of survival mode, and now people are starting to address the long-term kinds of issues, not just immediate need after immediate need. And what's interesting about that is that when you provide permanent supportive housing, is that while that's certainly not cheap or free or inexpensive, it is actually less than the cost just to maintain that random ricochet effect. In fact, in those same 61 communities, which I mentioned earlier, the cost to provide permanent supportive housing and the decreased service use which accompanies that housing was anywhere between thirteen and twenty-five thousand dollars per person per year. So it has a transformative effect on the individual and on a community-wide scale is coming in much less cost. Well, I think what we've found in terms of being able to bring all those different pieces together is that no one sector is really equipped to address all those issues on their own. It requires the con con contribution and the wisdom and experience and problem solving, solving skill sets of the private sector, of the nonprofit community, of government, of the faith community, and certainly on an individual level as well. As I mentioned, when you go to a, when you're there at a, at a street light with a homeless person, there's a one-to-one -one moment there with a the homeless person. And it, something that comes back to me is something that a minister who's been working with the homeless for over four decades, and he said that people become homeless less because they run out of money and more because they run out of relationships. And so having those critical in terms of volunteer, peer-to-peer -peer mentoring and social support, and part of that, the permanent support of housing, really does have a dramatic transformative effect that really works toward dramatically reducing homelessness. And I think at the end of the day, when, when we look at the issue of homelessness, I think let's look at it in the context of the private sector. When you're in a business, you have quarterly uh, revenue streams and, and, and profit sharing, and you really are quantifying the progress that you are making. I think in terms of addressing the needs of our community's most vulnerable citizens, we need to be having that same level of clarity, that same level of scrutiny. Because at the end of the day, any homelessness is something that isn't just in our best interest in terms of those who are homeless. For both economic as well as social reasons, it is something that is in our best interest as, our, as a broader community at large. Thank you very much.